In this video, I'm gonna review the latest release to Google's product review update and tell you exactly what you need to do to protect your site from its wrath. My name is Matt Diggity and I make a full-time living from product reviews through my affiliate media business, LeadSpring. I also teach this stuff at the Affiliate Lab. So you can say that updates like this are absolutely crucial to my business and yours as well if you're an affiliate marketer. On December 1st, in the season of giving, Google announced an add-on to the original product reviews update, which was released in April. According to the Googs, this update rolls out over three weeks. So don't poop the bed till it's all said and done. What kind of websites does this effect? Namely, websites that create, well, product reviews. And according to search liaison Danny Sullivan, this applies to single product reviews like a review of Fitbit or roundup reviews such as an article on the best fitness tracker. Websites that review products and give buyer recommendations on these products should pay extremely close attention to the release notes of these updates. I'll dig into it shortly, but it's important to point out that Google is literally giving out a playbook on what they want to see in their perfect version of a product review. Now, as mentioned earlier, this incremental update is an additional 2.0 addition to the original product Product reviews update. After you watch this video, I highly recommend you watch my previous video on the first product reviews update. But here's a quick summary of the key facts that you need to know. First, this update doesn't penalize sites with bad product reviews. It rewards sites that do it well. So if you lost rankings, it's because other sites were rewarded past you. Next, informational type queries should not be affected by this update, only review content. If you wrote an informational article on how to calibrate a fitness tracker, it should not be affected. Third, the first version of the product reviews update focuses on the need for expert knowledge in your content. You achieve that by talking about review points that are above and beyond the typical information you can get from the manufacturer's sales page. Fourth, you should have custom rating criteria in your reviews. If you're reviewing fitness trackers, then generic criteria like price and rating are not helpful. You should instead get into stuff like battery life and data accuracy, stuff that actually matters for a fitness tracker. Next, you wanna show how a product stacks up against competition. Don't just sell the crap out of a product as a standalone entity. Talk about what it does that sets it apart from its competitors. And next, you need to talk about the cons of a product. You need to talk about what the product does badly. It can't all be peaches and roses. You need to be real. This summarizes the main points of the previous update. Let's jump into the new requirements that were added into this recent one. But before we do that, I'd like to ask if you could smash a like button for me real quick. A like button smashing lets YouTube know that this video is good. And unlike a product review, it's super quick to do and makes my day as well. Let's get started. Here's the release notes for the December product reviews update. Let's start picking it apart from top to bottom. The first thing I wanna point out is this sentence here. If you have made positive changes to your content, you may see that improvement reflected as part of this latest release. What this means is that the product reviews algorithm isn't always running and evaluating sites based on its criteria. It rolls out periodically, so the changes you make today might not take effect until the next rollout of the update. For USEO veterans, this is how the Penguin algorithm used to work before they made it real time. Now the juicy section of these release notes is these two bullet points here. One thing we first recognize is that this new December update is a lot shorter than the one in April. It focuses on two bullet points instead of nine. So there's less criteria that you need to pay attention to this time around, but there's also more criteria overall. You win some, you lose some. Let's zoom in on bullet point number one. According to Google, you should provide evidence such as visuals, audio, or other links of your own experience with the product to support your expertise and reinforce the authenticity of your review. Yo, they kind of already talked about this in the last product reviews release notes. In April, they said that you should show what the product is like physically or how it is used. In my opinion, the word to pay attention to here is show. How else do you show something other than in an image? So essentially, this time around, they just crystallize this requirement with its own bullet point. So does this mean that if you have a technology review site, you need to buy every damn fitness tracker, router, and graphic card you review so you can show evidence that you actually use something? That's gonna get expensive real quick. I don't think you need to go that far. After all, how would an actual algorithm be able to figure this out? Google's image algorithm can definitely figure out what a Fitbit is. But can they really figure out what your living room looks like so they can confirm that you're actually looking at something from your home? Nah, come on. Google's algorithm is pretty good at matching though. Like if I do a Google image search of this photo of a Fitbit, it figures out right away and shows me every single website on the interwebs that use this image. So essentially they can figure out when you don't have original images. I'll give you two solutions to this issue, a cheesy easy one and a more difficult one. For the easy cheat mode, create original images. Use Photoshop or some tool like that to craft an original image. A quick flip and a rotation and the algorithm chokes up. Now slap that on a new background and you're good. People also like to swipe product review images from 
unboxing videos on YouTube. It's clever, I'll admit it, but I also hate this one because people do it to my YouTube channels all the time. Which brings me to the second solution. Play along with Google's game and actually buy and review the products. But my suggestion is to do these reviews on YouTube and then you can use YouTube embeds as your quote unquote evidence. There's a few reasons for this. First, YouTube converts crazy good. Second, you can often get your products for free. As long as it's not a super expensive product, the owners are pretty lenient with sending something out for a video review. Hell, we got sent out a thousand dollar rowing machine before. And third, you're now on two platforms that send traffic to each other. Your article review will send traffic to YouTube and your YouTube review will send traffic to the article. Meanwhile, you've just solved this whole issue of demonstrating evidence. If you want to learn more about YouTube affiliate marketing, make sure to check out my video with Nick Nimmin after you watch this video. Now, do I think that Google will eventually implement a trustworthy way for them to identify evidence of product usage? Maybe someday, but it's going to take some time. I have friends that actually do this stuff legit for their sites. They actually buy all the products and physically review them. Let's see how they fare when this update completely rolls out. Now onto the second bullet point, you should include links to multiple sellers to give the reader the option to purchase from their merchant of choice. You know who does this? Big ass websites like the Spruce. In this article review of coffee tables, you can see that they display purchase links for Amazon, Ashley Furniture, and Walmart. Here's Very Well Health doing the same thing, showing a billion links for a collagen powder. Is this something you need to do as well? Now I can tell you from tons of conversion rate optimization test that you don't want to do this. There's a concept called paradox of choice. When a buyer is faced with too many decisions, they stall and don't do a thing. This is what happens when you give them too many options. You ever go to a Denny's and take 10 hours to order something? But you can go to In-N-Out and have your order ready in one second. Anyways, if this is what Google wants, should you do it? In short, eventually yes. This is something that the algorithm can indeed pick up pretty easy. They can easily see if all your affiliate links are going to the same vendor or affiliate program. This is particularly easy in a single product review where you simply send people to whatever affiliate program gets you paid the most. They might have more challenge than this in a product roundup review because you're not likely sending all your affiliate links to the same place like Amazon. Or at least please tell me you're not sending all that traffic to freaking Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Okay, let's get back to the super cool algorithm looking B-roll. Because Google is saying that they want multiple affiliate links for a given product, they're essentially saying that more is better than less, which addresses a big concern that many affiliates have over how many affiliate links should be on one page. Google is telling us right now that it doesn't matter. Something I've said for a long time based on my test results. Now, should you stop whatever you're doing right now and apply to 50 affiliate programs? I would definitely not worry about it right now. Like 1% of the affiliate internet links out to multiple providers. They'd nuke the entire web. But keep your eye on this kind of thing and see if it starts to become more commonplace. Track successful websites in your niche and see if they start biting the bullet. Or subscribe to this channel and I'll make sure you're kept up to date.